Hey, good morning everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is uh, the YouTube channel of Chisholm's Chair Shop. This is a little gravel road that I live on. This um, heads out to a bigger road out here, uh, which is goes into Hendersonville. Um, I first wanted to thank a couple people, three people namely. Uh, first of all, my parents that um, found this piece of property that I've restored uh, a barn on the piece of property into my home and without them I couldn't be able to do this. It's very difficult to uh, make it as an artist. You put things in a gallery and they're 30, they mark them up 30% or you lose 30%. The numbers just aren't there unless you have a little bit of help and I've, I've been very fortunate in that regard and I'm aware of it. The other two people I'd like to thank are Brandy Clements and Dave Klingler at Silver River Chairs in Asheville, North Carolina. They taught me how to weave and do all things chair related. I used to repair my chairs and send them to them for them to re redo. And then I became so curious by it and saw how much enjoyment they got out of doing it that they taught me and I became their apprentice. So. If you have a chair of your own and you would like to learn how to reweave it yourself, they have boot camps and things that you can attend right here in Asheville, North Carolina. You can attend and take your chair and come for the weekend and we learn how to weave a chair. There's nothing more satisfying. And you can hand it down and last last a long time. So anyway, this is a little creek behind my house called Perry Creek. I don't know if you can see it. It's so pretty right here. Um, there's a little bridge back behind me, um, and I'll walk down this gravel road. My my, there are two driveways onto the property. The first one is a real short one, and that's where my shop is, and that's where we're headed now. So I will take you there now. I appreciate you tuning in, and uh, sorry this is a little rough. All right, stand by. So as I get closer to the house, I just want to tell you all a couple of things about where I live. Um, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina originally. Um, I've been here 22 years and the where I am in Hendersonville is at the top of the Blue Ridge Escarpment that runs from Georgia, I think, to Virginia. And it's like a wall. And when you leave South Carolina, I know, to come up to the mountains of North Carolina, you're in foothills and then you hit a wall. And you have to traverse up this escarpment and cut through a gap. You cross the Green River and then on the left is Hendersonville, and it's kind of on a plain between Hendersonville and Asheville. It's relatively flat, and the French Broad River, the oldest river on the planet, runs through Asheville, I think into the Tennessee, Ohio, Mississippi, all the way to the Gulf, and people have paddled it. John Bell, I think who started Camp Mondamon, he and his buddy left Cashers, North Carolina, and went to New Orleans in a canoe. So it's just an incredible area. So lucky to be here. And um, hold on, I'll get you closer to the house. All right. So I'll show you just a little tad bit of where I live. I'm in the lower driveway. Um, the building behind me is my main shop where I do all dusty things. Cutting, I have a stripping room. It's got two bays, stripping room and a cutting room where my big table saw and joiner and planer. And then I've recently redone the basement that my house sits on um, into a refinishing room, kind of chair weaving shop. It's my clean room. And um, it's really, really been a treat. I have every all my old tools from 35 years of doing this in there and all my special things. I'm gonna take you inside right now, stand by. All right, so here we, are, here we are at the entrance to my little shop under my deck. And uh, this is what I just love it so much. But anyway, I have a little sign. Not many people come here. I usually pick up and deliver most of the things that I do. But I do have a little sign and um, the doorway is right here. And let me reverse it and we'll go inside and I'll show you around and then I'll show you what I'm working on and I'll show you the main piece that we're working on. All right, so. Here is the entrance to the shop. There's a little sign I was talking about. I got both doors open. See what the camera can pick up. 
This used to be a goat stall. The, this, this was framed in white oak. All these beams are white oak, massive. Um, the ceilings are only seven and a half feet. I've gotten used to it, I'm not a tall man. And um, you can see where the stalls were. They were between each beam. There was a stall on each side, but I doubt there were horses in there. We think there were goats, and we heard, we heard that there were goats. This was a dirt floor when I got acquired the property. Um, we poured concrete in here, and the floor slopes. There's no flat spot, so in the corner over here, I'll show you in a minute, we had them pour a flat spot, so when I build a table, it's like sitting on a frozen lake. It's perfectly flat, and I know it'll come out perfect. So let me show you what's going on standby. The first thing I wanted to show you was this rocking chair that I posted about, and we'll come back to this in a minute. Um, very special chair. I thought it was black walnut at first, so many of them are, but upon closer examination, it is maple. And maybe that is why it lasted so long, because it's hard as stone. So that project is going on. Um, I have two very old chairs that are going to get rushed, which is this type of material. This is old material. I've ordered new fresh material, but it's stuck in the port in Shanghai, China. So these are two extremely old chairs. I replaced the right finial at the top of that chair to match match its buddy, so they're ready to be woven. Um, I've got a secretary over here with a broken leg. Um, I've done most of the repair work to the leg. I'm getting ready to glue that back on, put it back together. It's a married piece. This piece here was inserted into this piece. It was missing or something happened, but they're two different woods. The inner parts is mahogany and the outer is high quality cherry and I doubt they mixed them up on purpose. But what's curious about this piece, that board underneath, I'd say it's 20 inches, even though it looks shaded like it's two boards joined together, it's one piece of wood. So that came from a huge poplar tree. So the base is probably older than the top, I'd imagine. Um, anyway, I have a bandsaw here. That's my main workhorse here in the shop. Um, one thing I'm gonna do is, this is a sheet cane chair. So it doesn't get woven by hand. It comes in a roll and there's a spline that holds that in. So I'm gonna show how that's done. Um, just for fun at some point, this is my college guitar. I'm going to strip it, not the front. I'm going to keep the front vintage. It's so cool looking. But the backs, the sides are rosewood and they've turned opaque. And the back of this guitar is walnut and it too has turned fairly opaque. So I'm going to um, clean that up. That'll be a fun, fun little project. And I recently just finished up a big table and the leftover piece is next to the guitar of walnut. So I'm going to make a console, a small coffee table for the client, same client in the same uh, kind of uh, school as the, as the last piece. So let me talk about this piece for a second and I'll let you go. Stand by. Okay, this chair is called a Lincoln Rocker. And the lady that called me about this rocking chair described it to me on the phone. And I'm not taking in a lot of chairs right now. I've, I've learned the hard way that I can only do about 30% chairs and the rest mostly antique restorations and furniture and whatnot. Um, because it takes longer, you have to have a passion for it. It takes longer than the client would spend. It would go to the burn pile. Somebody's got to save them. And I'm trying to do a little bit of it in my spare time. So this chair is very special. When she told me it was not her great grandmother, but her great, great grandmother's, I went and got it, okay? So she sent me, what's so fascinating, she sent me a black and white picture of her great grandmother in this chair and she's sitting with her head right where this stain is that was i believe that stain is from hair uh dressing or something from back in the day where it caused 
a crackling in the finish, and that tells a serious story because in the black and white photograph, her hair head is right there, and that must have been how her natural position in this chair. Um, the chair has some serious structural issues that I did not see initially, but if you look underneath, it's really been cobbled and worked on. It's got plywood. It has braces. Um, if you look at the top, there's so many nails and cracks. This crack concerns me right here because it comes across, but it also goes in to this joint. So it's a floater. I don't know what's holding that. But all this cane's gonna come off. I photographed it all very closely, every aspect of the chair. The arms need to be tightened. Um, and the holes in the back, they may be borderline. They could be a little smaller, but since this is a sentimental piece and our grandma, great grandmother sat in it forever, I'm gonna do it exactly the same. I've ordered the material, it comes from China in Malaysia usually, and I ordered fresh um, fresh cane for that, so I'm gonna to hope to start on that very shortly. Um, if you look at the back of this chair, um, all of this structure, see the daylight um, here? All of this is being pulled apart by the tension on the cane. So all that needs to be reattached. And so then once I get the repairs made, the steps is this. So I'll make the repairs, undo the seat, or undo the cane first, make the repairs, and then clean it meticulously without hurting anything, especially that stain up top. And the only thing I might do to the finish is add one coat of shellac before I wax it because that's what's on it already, and that'll revitalize it without doing any harm whatsoever. So anyway, what we're gonna try to do is fix that seat and not have, he even, or she, whoever did the last one, they even put a black piece, see that? That is a black piece of wood, so it looks like you're looking through the seat. You know, they didn't want you to see those two things underneath the seat, so they decided to paint that plywood black. So no telling what we're going to find under this thing. But it also is going to reveal some secrets, I have a feeling. So anyway, a couple other things that are pretty cool, just over the time I've been a woodworker. My last uh, in restore I worked for for quite a while, Gary Barnhart, super fella, he inherited a bunch of veneers from a very old man long long ago I mean probably 60 or 70 years ago and it's probably it was today's market you can't even get this type of veneer it's very thick and so anyway Gary recently retired and he gave me a really nice stash of um, some very very pretty veneers I want to tell you about some of these because it's pretty interesting this first one is called Bee's Wing. Let me squirt it with some alcohol and see if we can see the color. And when you look at it really closely, it almost looks like a fly or a bee's wing. It has kind of a translucent. And so I've got like three or four sheets of this for inlays. And then right here, this is rosewood, okay? Very thick rosewood. All rosewood is not called rosewood because of its kind of rosy color. It's when you sand it, it smells like somebody bought a bouquet of roses into the room. It's very curious. This is rosewood too, but it's European. Look how pink that is. All so I have tons of rosewoods. Um, then these are maple veneers. This is just a standard hard maple, but look at these right here. This is some serious wood. Imagine a guitar made with this. And look at the figure on this when I wet it. It's got skulls in it. Let's see. Just beautiful stuff. Um, and then I saw a picture frame 
in a thrift store and I looked at it closely. I think this is the best rosewood I've ever seen. It is black almost and it sinks in water. So I took that frame apart, have that in my collection. Gary was also enough, kind enough to give me a lot of old burl veneers for patches and old furniture. When you repair old furniture that is missing veneer, you got to use old wood. This little box of scraps, my whole career, of every little piece I've repaired, it's full. But I can usually find what I need of any variety, and it's old in that box. This right here is a piece of boxwood. Crystal clear, no knots. That's what I use for inlay. And I bought that piece 25 years ago. And now this little piece right here, to buy one online, is 36 bucks. And I've got enough to last the rest of my life for inlays. Um, this piece of wood right here has been my practice piece my whole life. Um, I'll show you how to do some of these string inlays down the side and some of these bell flowers and whatnot. If you'd like to see, and I think that pretty much sums it up. So anyway, um, glad y'all are able to come in. This is a sewing machine my buddy bought over, a really nice one. It's called a Konso. It's a Japanese machine, but it'll stitch leather, I believe. So we've been messing with that. We can't get the bobbin to thread yet, but we're getting close. But lots going on, not, not a lot of time for that. So anyway, thank y'all for coming in today. And the first episode which will begin shortly, is going to be Lincoln Rocker um, Restoration Introduction Part 1. All right. Just wanted to thank you for coming here today, and uh, I'll be in touch, and I appreciate you, you watching today, okay? All right. Everybody take care. Bye.